Wake that ass up. LA's number one hip hop morning show is Nick Cannon Mornings on Power 106. Nick Cannon right. Radio, Power 106. Uh, a lot of conversation. We calling it Frontline Radio. We allowing people to utilize their voices, ask questions, offer solutions. And someone that we have with us jo- uh, joining us today is someone I, I know has uh, some words of encouragement, some solutions, and is truly a leader in our community. Uh, from the 10th Council District, uh, we have... I, he told me to call him Herb. I was going to say, hey, Mr. Wesson. Uh, but Herb <laughs> is, is joining us. Uh, and we really appreciate your time, even in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of civil unrest, taking the time out to talk with us. No, it's an honor to be here on your show and, and, and with you. And I just want to say thank you for all that you've done uh, during this very important struggle. But people you know, from Florida to Washington, from California to New York, individuals are expressing themselves. They're doing it the right way. They're out on the streets. They have a strong message. The company, the country in a lot of ways is coming together. I believe that this is one of those moments in history, one of those rare moments where we can change the world. So it is very important that we don't let individuals that have their own agenda right. take us off message, hijack our message, or change the narrative. This is about healing a criminal justice system that is flawed and does not serve people of color, black people and Latinos well. We've got all eyes on us. Let us change the world. Brother Herb, I've been uh, borrowing your words all week long from the statement that you put forth, really talking about, you know, the systemic issues and, you know, that it doesn't take one racist uh, or whether you remove one racist or not. The the system of 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 racism has been implemented for so long and it's time to reform and time to really step into that idea of a new system, a new norm where people can embrace the idea of humanity and, and do away with oppression. I mean, you being a yeah. member of our, of our government, knowing that it's an infrastructure that is, is a flawed system, what are some of those changes that people can say, all right, these are actually happening, things are actually occurring in the right direction? Okay, well, what, one thing that I want to say, just where it relates to the system, when you have a flawed system, a racist system, you can have that system being operated by individuals that are not racist, and you're still going to get the same result. (laughs) You know, this country has never atoned for Mm. its greatest sin, which was slavery. And so what basically what, what we have to do now is I think that the the folk that are out there protesting, you have to continue to do that because at the end of the day, it's going to take lawmakers like myself from every level, from the federal, state, county, and local level to institute the changes that are needed. So there are just a variety. I think the biggest problem that we have though right now is the presumption of criminality Mm. so when you look at a black guy you just uh, presume that 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 he's a criminal or up to no good a prejudged villain and 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 that's the biggest mindset that we have to change and then we can put in place laws in my opinion that will ensure fairness. But just a quick example of what I'm talking about, given the pandemic, everybody now is buying whatever it is they need and it's being delivered to right. their home. Right. So the delivery service has just blown up. Right. So there was a brother who went into a gated community, was given the code, so that he could deliver some product. Everybody knows that everything is being delivered now, but the neighbors in that complex blocked his car in and wouldn't let him leave 
because they presumed that he was a criminal. Right. And then began to question him. So that's one of the biggest things that that we have to change right now. The presumptions. Well, that, you know, that because that's what, uh, it, you know, it's different. Like when you were growing up and I was growing up, when we were about ready to start driving, our parents not only taught us how to drive, but they taught us how to react when we were going to be pulled over. Yeah, DWB, <laughs> driving while black. <laughs> not in the event you're going to get pulled over. When? They knew you were going to get pulled over. So you were taught to say, yes, sir, uh, no, sir to ask permission to go into your back pocket and pull out your driver's license, or I am going into my glove park compartment to give you my registration. People from other ethnic groups, they don't get this training. Right. People, you know, nobody, there's so many people that don't even know what it's like to be stopped and questioned. Right. So I think the mindset of this country has to change. And when you look at this new generation that are out on the streets, trying to make sure that everybody understands this message, I think that they're going to, to be the tip of the spear that helps create this change. But we in government have to legislate it. And legislation is so important. Uh, you also speak of the civil unrest that are currently going on and, and the, the confusion in that. What advice would you say, obviously, other than, you know, stay safe and there's been curfews implemented here in Los Angeles, but knowing that there's people out there who just want to peacefully protest, they want their voices to be heard, but in the midst of agitators, in the midst of law enforcement who are operating out of fear, uh, we often see things that start off peacefully and then they turn into something like we just recently seen in Long Beach or in, in many other places where at first Long Beach was a, a great peaceful gathering and then, you know, that energy shifted immediately. What do you say to uh, a a Anyone who wants to voice their opinion, wants to see this change, but then, again, it, it's met with so much violence and anger. Well, to protest, to demonstrate, to boycott, I mean, these are staples of this country. There are a lot of countries where you can't do that. So my hat is off to everybody that wants to go out and protest uh, for uh, a, a very good cause, which is to change this system but when you're going to do this please make sure that you understand the surroundings that you're in right. because there are, are and have always been an element of people who participate just so they can disrupt right. anarchists uh th we've got individuals that are coming to these protests where i'd say the lion's share of them start off very peacefully delivering the type of message that that needs to be delivered. What what occurs is these folk that have a separate agenda, they come in there prepared with tools to right. destroy and disrupt. And then people can't get caught up in the moment. Brother, so you have to know your surroundings. Right. Your head should be on a shrivel. And when you see uh, trouble, Make sure you extract yourself from that situation. Now, Brother Herb, I would say this and in, to that because I agree with you 100 percent. But uh, the things that we're seeing in the media and the things that uh, we're actually making our souls uneasy aren't really the agitators and the, and the looting because that's going to happen. But it's almost the way that we see the law enforcement handle it. And and, and again, they have to protect themselves. Their, their job is to, you know, reinforce order. But. In these protests, we're watching police cars run over hundreds of people. We're watching officers, you know, uh, pepper spray and tear gas groups of people pushing people out of the way. When the thing that we're upset about is law enforcement improperly handling the community and it's happening even at the protest. So is there some level of responsibility or some level of training or something that what is the message being told to law enforcement about even how to handle the civil unrest? Well, what's happening right now, this is, you know, I think there have been protests in hundreds of cities. There's like 45 curfews set throughout this country. 
I have never seen anything like this before. Right. I think that we have delivered a message to this country. And, and, and when people know that they're being watched, it alters their behavior. But something that blew my mind today and that caused me to have hope is I saw law enforcement and protesters kneeling together, mm. holding hands, right. hugging. I mean, because we've got to get to that point. And, and so the pressure that's being applied to the system by the individuals that are part of this country is what's going to make this change occur. And we've just got to keep on doing it, highlight the negative things that that happened during these protests, and I believe that we can change them. This is that one moment, and I've been around the block several times right. where the stars are aligned properly. This is the perfect storm for positive change, and we can't, again, the most important thing that we have is the narrative, right. and we cannot allow the media or law enforcement or radical groups to change that narrative right this is about fixing a flawed criminal justice system as we're dealing with this COVID 19 we have illuminated the fact that the public health care system has failed communities of color so we're highlighting that right. we're also highlighting the fact that the economy and the uh, employment system is failed people of color. So we've got a lot of positive synergy right. going here. We cannot be deterred and we cannot let this negative be hijacked, right. this narrative be hijacked. And you 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 put out a positive statement uh, to the to the community of what you stand for and uh, expressing the need for change. I personally get a lot of flack a lot of times for being a little too radical and uh, unrealistic when I say that we should do away with law enforcement all together and come up with this mindset if we're really speaking of reform to start from scratch with how we govern our people and almost approach it from a, a sovereign aspect and instead of having police officers which was initiated as we all know from slave patrols but the mindset of we need peace officers people in the community who want to enforce peace but people always tell me that's unrealistic as a member of government and saying yo we got to start over is that realistic? Is that something that we can really uh, put forth when we speak of change? Because that's the only kind of change that can really fix all of this. Well, let me say this to you and to my friends that are with Black Lives Matter, LA Can, other organizations that are aggressively uh, trying to advocate for change. If you guys don't shoot for the moon, it then we don't have the opportunity to catch a star. Mm. When you are asking for the things that you ask for, it opens up pathways for individuals like me to get things accomplished. The moment that you begin to cut back on your demands, I think it makes it more challenging for people that sit in chairs like mine to move forward. Right. So I respect what's going on, uh, your opinion, and as long as folks aren't destroying things and injuring people, I view that as a very useful tool right. for government uh, servants like myself. And lastly, you know, Brother Herb, what can the people yeah. do to help you in, in, in your seat in you know, knowing that you you are helping get legislation pushed across, what can we do other than, you know, protest, use our voices? Is there some type of effort that knowing that it, if if you are, are leading us in as a, ch a change agent, what can we do to, to help? Well, the most important or let me let me rephrase that. In my opinion, the most effective governments and the most effective public officials are those where there is a significant involvement from the public. So the public has to stay engaged. 
they, they, they definitely have to hold us accountable. They need to make suggestions so that we have things to negotiate with. Right. But what I would urge is that if they're out on the streets, we really need to end this looting, destruction of property, because that then makes it difficult for us to uh, reduce funds that we give the police department to change police officers into peace officers when we are frightening individuals from throughout the, uh, the city of Los Angeles. When you have a group of anarchists, a group of people that just want to see the system devolve but that's so. a, that's easier said than done because like you oh, said it's almost it, impossible. yeah if you tell uh you you can't tell somebody who's not <laughs> not with the the movement and who actually is an agitator to calm down because yeah but i tell you what i did see i think it was from some brothers and sisters i think they were in oakland where they basically began to film these individuals right. that had brought in tools and were t- taking down panels and breaking in, and they called them out. They said, "Who, who the heck are you? Yeah, you, you don't, you, you don't live here. Why are you doing that? We're not doing that. We have you on film. Maybe they have to do that." Yeah, Maybe we got to fight from both to, sides. That's so unfortunate yeah. that we feel like even just that for our voices to be heard, we got to make sure that we we kind of calm down the confusion because right now just just a lot of noise isn't going to help anyone. But last thing on this, I think that the majority of people in this country that are watching uh, what's going on uh, on television and on the Internet can tell without a doubt that the overwhelming majority of people that are out there on the uh, in the streets that they are doing the right thing that they are letting their voices be heard I, and and that's that is important so that people can look and see that's not the majority of people that are just dis- you know destroying property that is the minority so i am very proud of of the folk that are out there. And I believe that this change in this country will be initiated by this new generation of of young people where we have blended races and people have friends from every religion. I think that that's what's going to save us. And that's what's gonna give people like me the ability to implement change. There it is. Well, we appreciate your time, Brother Herb. This has been a pleasure. Your words are encouraging. And keep fighting that good fight for us. Thank you. And you keep doing what you're doing. You're setting a phenomenal example. I think that it's really important that people can see individuals that they look up to like you on the front lines of of this movement of change. So God bless you. You be safe and keep it up. All right, God bless you as well. Love.